Hey everyone, it's Daniel with VintageMagic.com and thanks again for watching. So today is going to be an introduction to um, a video that's probably going to take a lot longer. Um, it's in regards to grading Magic the Gathering cards. Um, this video will probably last for like, I don't know, months if I had the, uh, the footage to do it. But I wanted to go over today kind of an introductory for people who really don't know what it is. Um, and they could do some research online and kind of understand what exactly is grading Magic the Gathering cards. Um, definitely this is not a video for people that um, are super advanced um, in grading and such, but it is good to, uh, there will be some points in this video that uh, maybe you guys didn't know. So uh, definitely, I hope you guys take something out of it. So um, below I will be putting a link to one of the articles um, my late uh, friend Nick Franzoglio wrote about PSA and Beckett. Uh, Nick was actually a PSA collector. And for those of you who don't know what PSA is, PSA is Professional Sports Authenticator. Uh, PSA is the largest grading company in the world. They're owned by Collectors Universe and they're traded on the NASDAQ, on the stock exchange. Um, Beckett, or BGS, is, um, stands for Beckett Grading Services. And they are out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, PSA is out of Newport Beach, California, Irvine. Um, so Beckett is, um, for those of you who are familiar with sports cards, they were the ones who actually um, did a lot of uh, magazine publications. They do monthly uh, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, whatnot, almanacs. Uh, they, they've grown to a very big media company, and they're a very um, large private company um, in the hobby. Um, Probably the largest, actually. So um, they have their own grading company, and um, so those two are the the, the two largest companies um, that we work with. Um, we are uh, dealers uh, who uh, can uh, resell their products in the sense that I can offer that service, sh uh, send the items uh, that you wish to get graded to them and they would uh, grade them um, and slab them. We do not grade the cards. I think that's a question that comes up like almost all the time. Uh, do we slab cards? Of course not. Uh, we submit the cards just like you would um, online and we would um, go through our dealer, our, um, our, our uh, representative from Beckett and they would actually manage that and get the orders done appropriately. But, <clears throat> excuse me, we're just like you guys. <clears throat> so, um, that kind of gives you a brief idea of what it is. If you read the article below, it's going to give you more of a rundown from Nick's uh, perspective. Nick, again, was a PSA collector. Uh, he really enjoyed uh, the PSA brand, but it has nothing to do with not liking Beckett. It's just that he preferred PSA. So um, the, the two biggest differences between PSA and Beckett is that the cases are extremely different. Um, if you look at a PSA case, it's very thin and it's um, it's very tiny, like a, probably about this big. Whereas a Becca case, it's probably almost double, a double or so. And so the sturdiness of the case um, is one of the most aesthetically uh, you know, pleasing things for a collector. Uh, they like the, the protection, they like the thickness. The other big difference with PSA and Beckett is the uh, grading, um, the points and also the subgrades. So PSA uses, um, a 10 point scale that also has half point subgrades uh, for some of the um, grades now. Um, but they go all the way up to, to 1 to 10, where 10 is gem mint. Now, gem mint for Beckett um, is um, 9.5. So there's actually a grade, a 0.5 uh, overall grade called pristine, which is a BGS 10, um, which is makes Beckett, uh, Beckett designates that as a, you know, a higher level of grading. Um, some of you guys have said before that that's just a gimmick and I can appreciate that, hey, it's marketing. Um, but uh, in my opinion, there are PSA 10 cards that are better than a PSA 10 gem mint. So it, it actually is very nice to have a grade above that because um, there is a standard above that. Back to the subgrade uh, portion, Beckett has four subgrades. Uh, they actually show you the breakdown of the grade from uh, uh, the four major subgrades. So that's centering, corners, edges, and surface. And so when PSA grades its cards, it's the same thing. They use the same type of 
um, approach with that. You'll notice um, in the link below and also in our glossary section on our website at vintagemagic.com, we actually lay out um, the law of their grading standards and break it out. Um, so when you talk about subgrades, this is probably why our Beckett cards get the highest premium dollars. Um, subgrades are very important to collectors because they, they give you the, uh, they show the weaknesses and also the strengths of a card. Um, and they also allow, um, you know, collectors to kind of collect specific subgrades that's catered to them. Um, while, why, why that's really important is some, some collectors might prefer really great centering. They might prefer really great surface, but they don't care about corners, for example. So they can focus on their collecting uh, based on certain subgrades. Um, my, my recommendation on subgrades, my theory on subgrades is that um, they are very useful um, for collectors, but uh, I'm gonna to get to a point where it's more important than just subgrades um, in a little bit. But in subgrades, I would collect something that um, you feel that is important to you, so aesthetically. So if you feel that a visually the centering of a card is focused um, very, very centered very well, there's no tilt, um, then I would go for a higher center, centering grade. Um, and centering in, in Beckett and in all the subgrades are a 10 point scale also um, using their metric. So um, what I would do is read, uh, I'll put the link of each website below of Beckett and PSA. Uh, actually, you know what, I'm gonna put the just link of just the article and then within the article, you can actually look at their websites, uh, submit orders, um, pricing and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I think that's the best way to go about the, the explanation. Um, it's a lot more visual that way. So, um, one of the things that, um, and, and this is to the point I was going to allude to about cards in general, graded cards is you have to keep in mind that the quality of the card is only as good as the card. Um, you're probably thinking like, well, then I just buy a card that was, um, you know, you buy a car from eBay, this is a nine, so it has to be a nine, right? Uh, I'm gonna inform you that that's, that answer, to the answer to that is uh, yes, most likely, but no. It is not a nine unless the quality of the card is um, commensurate to that. So what I mean by that, is, and, and by the way, both PSA and Becca do a fairly good job on being accurate, but in the world of grading, there's a lot of human error. And um, you have to, as a consumer, buy a card that is quality and meets the grade and condition or exceeds um, of the grade um, and ideally meets the grade of what you're buying. And most, both companies have made mistakes in the past of either overgrading or undergrading a card. So let's talk about overgrading. Overgrading a card basically means that um, Let's say uh, Beckett, Beckett or PSA gives a card a gem mint grade, a PSA 10 or a 9.5. And overgrading means they, this card physically when you inspect it um, does not deserve the quality of, an, of a 9.5 or a PSA 10. Um, now, you guys are collectors. You guys are aware of when you guys get the cards. Look at the card. Look at the card front and back, inspect it, shift the the card and make sure that there's no hidden scratches, there's no dings or nicks that are on the, especially with PSA, there's, um, you know, you have to tap it a little bit in the case, but you have to really make sure um, that the cards are uh, quality of what you're getting. Um, this does present a problem, I mean, to the industry, because obviously uh, what you're doing is you're hoping, you know, as a collector, your confidence is built off these brands and also you build off the people you buy from. So the dealers generally who are grading or individuals that grade the cards don't really have, um, you know, they rely on the grading companies to do their job correctly. And I would say you know, in the high 90s, for the most part, there's, you know, there's really no reason to uh, say anything. But in the special case that there is a problem or there's a concern, um, I would definitely reach out to the person you bought the card from um, and make make sure that you can get either a refund or some type of um, you know you know addressment to this whole situation because if there's a car that was overgraded, um, it's really important that you uh, bring that up to the seller. Um, and as a collector, you have the right to do that. 
I, so I, I do want to make that aware to you guys. Now, if you bought the car like a year ago or something, or even like a month ago, you should have told, you know, after getting the car or, you know, a, a decent amount of time a while back, um, you really have no way to re return a card. It's very difficult because you should have addressed that in the very beginning. Um, so it's very important that you you address that in the very, um, very beginning of it all. So um, something that I, I wanted to share with you guys for my company, VintageMagic.com, is I really believe that the quality of the car needs to be um, satisfactory to you know the condition that you know the grade that's been given. So if you guys ever buy a car from me, you will not receive any headaches or problems um, as long as you don't you know you don't let me know two months, three months, a year down the road that hey I want to return this card or I want to exchange a card. If the card really deserves um, a return and uh, an addressment to Beckett or PSA, um, I'm going to definitely um, you know be a, be on your side um, and try to resolve the problem um, so we can both um, be in a, you know, a mutually, um, you know, beneficial spot. Because in some cases, um, uh, there, you know, the, the subgrades might be changed or something for, there was a mistake on, you know, corners were a nine, the edges were a nine point, uh, the corners were nine, edges were 9.5, for example, and they could switch those if they made that wrong um, judgment based on the location of the subgrade. Um, so I'm talking about Beckett in that case. So um, again, it's more of a specific situation. So what I would do is uh, send me a message on vintagemagic.com, hit contact if there ever is an issue. But for cards you buy from eBay sellers and other people, you're gonna have to contact them and address the issue. Um, when a card is, um, so instead of overgraded, it's undergraded. This is a special case where <coughs> um, where the, the, the grader um, gave a card, for example, um, a nine, and uh, the card um, is deserving of a 9.5 or a PSA 10. Um, this is a very interesting topic, and probably I would have to expand this in a whole nother video. But the gist of all of it, basically, is it goes back to human error. Uh, graders make the same error as they do of overgrading. And so if, if uh, a card has, it really deserves a higher grade, um, you as a collector, um, have the ability to review and resend the card to the grading company um, and basically have the card, what we call bumped up to a higher grade. Now, is this gonna work all the time or is this something you can gimmick the system? No, it's not gonna work that way. Ultimately, the grading companies need to, uh, you know, the, they, have to have a, a, they have to see the card and they have to say, hey, you know, this gives a strong case of, of a mistake that they made and they will re-slab re the card, re-serialize number of the card. So that's something that does happen, and I want you guys to be aware of that. Um, something I will say in this video about graded cards is that in grading Magic the Gathering cards, um, you are essentially preserving and archiving the, the uh, condition of the card. Um, many times when you have them in decks or sleeves and whatnot, um, they can get damaged and, and um, you know, and there's definitely a collectible factor of this. You can't play with them anymore, but now you can view them and also display them in a way where there's a collectible factor like a comic book. Um, some people would argue and say, hey, you know, Magic the Gathering cards are meant to be a game. They should be used to play only. Uh, another video we could talk about and debate that all day long, but um, in the case of graded cards, uh, they're definitely meant for collectors and investors, and even players. Players like to have some graded cards too. They find it, um, you know, very beautiful in their cases, and they like to have them, you know, in company with their decks and their collection. Um, one of the things that I want to leave you guys on graded cards is that graded cards are very, very difficult to sell. Um, in the sense that I'm not saying, and they're more, they're not as liquid. So Magic the Gathering cards and then vintage Magic the Gathering cards are already in a very small, narrow uh, marketplace already. But graded Magic cards, or what I call GMTG, Graded Magic the Gathering, is something that is very difficult um, to just sell almost instantly for almost the same price that you paid. Um, so you gotta really keep in mind that when once you buy that graded card, you're buying into um, a longer term investment. Um, if you're looking to flip graded cards, I'm gonna caution you right off the bat for those of you who like to do flips, uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, you have to play the long road and you have to buy and sell quality cards. Um, 
that's one of the things that I think what I counted the most as a vendor is that I get people wanting to sell me graded cards. And then the grades don't, are not, you know, they're not commensurate to the value of what, you know, the quality of the grade was. So again, human error, things happen. But if you come to me at a Grand Prix and you give me a BGS 9 Beta Lotus, and I don't find that this card is reserving of a nine beta Lotus that I can resell and be confident with, I'm not gonna buy the card. Same thing, you send the card out to Star City, ABU Games, they're gonna criticize the card and make sure that <coughs> the card is deserving of the grade that it was given. Um, you're gonna find there's a lot of human error involved, a lot of fluctuation. Um, everybody has their own opinion. Some people might say, hey, you know, uh, I felt this was on the surface, but some people might have felt, hey, this is on the edge. It is definitely a very um, a, a opinionated marketplace. So you have to be aware when you buy them uh, what you're getting into. So uh, I will leave you guys with, you know, uh, that there, you know, I'll do some story time. I'll share with you guys some graded card orders in the future that we have a massive amount of orders that we'll be grading here soon. Um, and there's definitely gonna be nine fives, BGS tens, you know, PSA tens, whatnot, um, power nine, everything. Um, but um, I, I want you guys to uh, look f look uh, for other videos on investing for graded cards, and um, you know, other ways to either grade them, detect you know, fraudulent cards, color cards, ink cards, um, altered cards. You know, all these kind of cards are you know, all, all these topics will be coming up here very soon. But today was just more of a rundown of hey. For the person that has not experienced Match the Gathering graded cards, be sure to check out the link below of our article. Um, and also, I'll put the link of uh, maybe some other uh, articles about uh, that were written about us or, and whatnot about graded cards. And then you can take a look and you know, make, do some research yourself. Um, thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you guys have a great week. Take care.